swells, and we're particularly going to give them to the brass. Um, I'll say that the virtual instrument engine that's built inside of Pro Tools Expand 2 is not really great at brass sounds. A lot of, unfortunately, uh, a lot of uh, virtual instruments suffer from having a good ability to do this well. So I do apologize if this is not as uh, uh, epic as it could be. Um, one good note is if you do decide to further uh, expand upon these ideas, what you could do is if you have Pro Tools at home, just log on to nativeinstruments.com. Uh, and download some of their free demos of their brass instruments. The ensembles are great. The, the brass ensemble and the string ensemble are actually really killer. And the demo is like, third, it's like it, it times out after 30 minutes. So you just have to restart it and you use it again and again and again. But you're going to use the same MIDI and you literally just swap out the virtual instrument for the ones that we have here. So like if, you, if you're like, oh, I like what's here, what I wrote, but if the MIDI just sounds horrible or the virtual instrument's not really impressive, you can do other things like that. Um, what we're going to do is you should have you should have these last one, two, three, four, five virtual instruments that were left open. I don't know if you guys remember building those, but uh, if you don't, you could just create five new instruments, but you should have, have five that are just completely wide open options for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this as our brass section. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Uh, I just don't know how, I'm, I think if, if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly the way that this was done before, uh, tuba is a very unimpressive instrument on this virtual instrument pack. So let's see, one, two, three. What we might do is do, what, what might help us is if we do, um, Let's add one more. Let's add one more virtual instrument. Command Shift N. Let's just add one more stereo virtual instrument, and then I'll have you label or instrument track, and then I'll have you label them accordingly. All right. So this is what it's how we're going to do this after you get that done. What we're going to do is we're going to make uh, two parts for each of these brass sections, um, and I, and in most cases they may just be octaves apart or they may be kind of uh, playing other notes to a chord. I'll show you how to work that out. What we're going to do is the first one's going to be horn one. And I'll zoom in so you can see this. So the first one's going to be horn one. And again, you can hit command down instead of having to hit next. Command down and write in horn two. Command down, trumpet one. Oops, command down. Trumpet two. Command down. And, la and last one here is uh, trombone one and two. Again, I, I mean, we normally would have a tuba, but uh, I, I'm pretty sure that's the one that's very um, unauthentic in this patch group. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and still continue to use expand. Um, so you can open in horn one a fresh expand. And let's set this one up. And we'll see what we like, and then we'll see. We may either copy it over and keep the instrument, or we may have to copy this over and just make some modifications. So if we open it up, we're going to go to brass. Uh, let's see, brass, brass, brass. I'm missing it. How did they bulk these? Oh, they did. Yeah, I guess it's 16. Yeah, in, in group 16. Let me just see, we want a French horn, but I forget which one of these is the, there's French horn and then there's French horn plus, so let's take a look. Sorry, let me record enable that. There's that, let's see what this other one is, if it's any better. Oh, okay, so you want French horn plus. Uh, for your horn. It says French horn plus. It's not too bad, but it's still a little, you know. Before we just leave this, what do we need to do? What do we do to the, other, to the strings when we started with them? We did something specific. Real easy. Yeah, we gave it a little bit of effect, right? So all we're going to do is activate effects one and turn up effects one for that channel. It's just going to give it some life. All 
not too bad, okay? The, um, what we can do is, for the French horns, we can go ahead and, uh, I mean, that's doable. There's not much we can really adjust that's really gonna help us much. So let's go ahead and option drag for French horn two. We're actually gonna keep that exactly as it is for a French horn two, okay, or horn two. So if you option drag that, we're gonna use the same, essentially, plug-in sound between those two expands. After you've done that, you can jump over to trumpet one. You can go ahead and just make it easy if you wanna just option click the expand. We just need an expand on trumpet one. But we're gonna go back to the brass and woodwind section and we need to figure out which trumpets are gonna be best. Uh, my assumption is, is that if there's a trumpet plus, Ah, oh, what does it have to be muted? Um, let's see. Nope. I might not have much choice with this one. One more option for this. Okay, I would say, you know, to me it sounds like three trumpets sustain plus sounds closest to where we're gonna go again we're gonna add effects you know effects one oh, it looks like it's already put on built into this one. Oh no it's because we copied it that's right so as long as you have effects one uh, so that that one I'm doing three trumpet sustain plus it's in that bank 16 brass plus woodwind we're gonna use that for both trumpet one and two option drag and that one's good to go then we're gonna go finally to trombones so I need a record arm in trombone land and we're just going to do the same thing. Let's just find out which trombones are worth using. It's probably trombone plus. Oof. See, I mean, you, you hear discrepancies between the tone on the inch, on the notes, and that's uh, unfortunate. But I don't think there's much else here. Trombone, 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 trombone. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, so in that last group, trombone plus, seems like it'll work out just fine, and you can option, click and drag, and we're good to go. So now we should have everybody. I mean, it's, it's going to get a little synthetic here in a second, but uh, I think we can live with it. So, real quick, let me just check and make sure everybody caught up with that, all right? So we just went ahead and, and picked out our sections for those three groups. Uh, raise your hand if you need help with that, or if you're kind of a little behind on it. You just need, what if you caught that whole thing? You got, okay. Okay, yeah, so horn, horn, horn one, horn two, trumpet one, trumpet two, trumpet one, trombone two. So that instrument eight will be trombone two. Yeah, so that'll be trombone two. Um, let me just make sure you guys all have the banks real quick. Actually, I think, how many of you already have it loaded? Loaded, ready to go. How many of you have it loaded, ready to go? Okay, Kylie, are you still working on it? Which one? Oh, okay. Let me just open this up so you can see it then. I'm just gonna leave them all up so that you can see which ones. So this is the preset for the French horns. It's uh, 16, but it's French horns plus. This is the preset for the trumpets. And this is the one for the trombones. So uh, 
French horn plus, three trumpet sustain plus, and trombone are the patches that I use for those three groups. And again, for parts one and part two, they're identical. So like French horn part is the same is the same one as French horn uh, two. So you can just option drag, option click and drag, and copy it over. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some easy loop recording to stack up these parts. Again, we prefer them to be monophonic. And I'll tell you the real reason why these should be monophonic, okay? And this is how I always try to teach composition. When it comes to composition, technically anything goes, but if you leave these parts individualized on a single note by single note basis, then you get to mix it when you mix as if it were real instruments which means if you need more of a, just one note in a chord, you literally can just push it to get that fulfilled on a volume instead of having to go in and edit the velocities in the MIDI. It separates everybody so that like when you just mix it just as if you had a real live orchestra in front of you and you're able to blend and automate. Because in some, there's some times where you do want more of this or less of this and you want to be able to push and pull that. Another huge benefit of that is when you export the notation, the notation is actually written out the way it should be part by part, instead of having you know one part have three notes or you know chords on it, uh, where a musician would look at it and go, I don't know what to do with this, you'd actually have parts already ready to go. But again, it really comes from the mix perspective. And you want to mix it like you would mix anything else, instead of having to be stuck inside of this, how well the blended notes fit on that one track. Um, so I, I prefer modifying it that way and working with it that way. These are the patches. We're going to go ahead and move on and let's get these stats. So what we're going to, or these swells, what we're going to do is I want to build swells around, and I'm going to start by record arming the horn one. I want to build swells around what's happening at, after the BPM 114 section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, let's see, I'm going to start where that two bar count is, but I'm not going to start immediately. So that two bar count starts, I think here. Okay, there we go. Alright, what I'm going to do is if I'm watching the visual, I'm only going to pick a couple spots that I want to, to actually make these swells happen. So if I'm watching the visual, I think what I want to do is go like this. Swell right here, right there where that flash goes. I'm going to do another swell right here, right there. And then one more swell right at this summer. And then I should swell right here at the end for the final swell and the final boom. So there'd be one final swell on the J.J. Abrams and then just one boom at the end. We could do it with the, with the Taiko drums. So what I'm going to do is, is literally the easy way to do this is if I jump up to where the swell belongs. So let me find it for you. It's right here at this flash. So it goes one, one, two, bam. All right, so check this out. And maybe you could do this with me, okay? I'm going to make a selection at start 11, 11 uh, bar 11, beat 1, and, and that selection is going to go uh, two bars all the way to 13, beat 1, okay? So all you have to do in the start bar is if you go to horn 1, click into the lane, and type in 11, 1, right? And then end 13, 1, and hit return, it's going to select that section for you. That makes sense? So it starts on a bar 11, beat one, it ends on bar 13, beat one. So far so good? So, so we're gonna make the selection. So here's the beauty of the way that this works with the MIDI, okay? Um, I'm gonna minimize my video just so that I can, I can see it, but it's still out of the way, all right? The beauty of it is here is that we mostly had the tempo mapped out to the frame changes or the, the scene changes. So they're already mapped, quite easily matched. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to make my each of my tracks here, horn one, horn two, trumpet one, trumpet two, trumpet one, trombone two. I'm going to shift on them and hold shift, option, and I'm going to change their size to small so that I can see all of them in one shot. So if I just basically select them by holding shift, shift plus option, and go to the ruler and change them to small, they'll all be visible in one shot. Follow me so far? Okay, so here's how this works. Um, I have to, I think I have to deactivate. 
Oh, we do. Okay, go down to, uh, go up to options and deactivate loop playback. Or I'm sorry, it's loop record. It's not even active, is it? Uh, oh, no, it's not. I'm sorry. We, I'm sorry. We have to activate loop playback, but we have to make sure loop recording is deactivated. So just make sure this isn't checked. What we're going to do is actually quite brilliant. By selecting this, it's going to allow us to jump between the parts and stack the swell. Now, the swell is going to crescendo, and we're going to have to write, go and write that in. But where do we do that? In automation, and we can just do it in the post. So we're not going to do it in, while we're performing it. We're literally just going to stack up some notes. Easy way to do it, check this out. All I'm going to do is push record, all right, some, you know, record or command space bar. And what this is going to do is it's going to loop. So check, check out how this works out, okay? Uh, okay, so I'm just going to stack up. So my notes, I think I might end up having to be maybe two notes. Let's see. We'll just work it out. So I'm going to toggle to horn two while it's looping. And then I'm going to toggle to trumpet one. And I can play the exact same note if I wanted to. Let's see. If I don't want to, just so you know, if I if I don't want to record and I just want to test a pass, I actually don't have to. to uh, oh, geez. If I just want to test the pass, I, I I could essentially just stop the recording process and let it play and test the pass first before I go. As long as I keep the selection. basically just going to keep stacking down the way. So I started my horns in the middle, I did my trumpets a little higher, and then I'm going to have my trombone be a little lower. That's how it fits. So horns in the middle, trumpets a little higher, horns, uh, trombone down below. Okay, so I'm going to stack this up. Oh, whoops, except I did that one wrong. Uh, almost there. Two more passes and it's good. Okay, all done. Okay, so now uh, it's I can't tell if the outputs someone's someone's clipping. I can't tell if it's my master output or oh I didn't add a master. That's why. Sorry, let me add a master fader to this. You may be at the point where you need to do that as well. Uh, you'll know you'll know you need to do it when you start hearing clipping on the output. Yeah, because there's just as you add tracks, you just get a lot more volume stacked. All I need to do is turn my master fader down a bit. Okay, so that's all said and done. Why don't you go ahead and give that a whirl? You're just going to stack them on. You can single notes, though. Each time you're, you're doing it with essentially with one finger, and you're just going to let it loop and stack it up. But again, it's part by part, so you're going to stack it up part by part as it loops.
Once you've stacked, I would say once you stacked your first set, um, I, I did one more set of uh, of these at uh, bar, well, let's see, bar 13. It started at bar 13, beat one as a two count, two count to land on bar 13, beat three. And then the final stack, if you, when, once you kind of get comfortable stacking those, you basically want one last stack where it says J, where it says JJ Abrams, and you want it to swell to JJ Abrams. I would start on beat sixteen three and land on beat seventeen one. So essentially, you're going for blah. basically you could just do you could do everybody in some sort of stacked chord, and then when we get to the into darkness frame, it'll essentially go. Let's see, seventeen beat one. Boom, right there. So whatever this this frame is, bar 18, beat 3. So bar that last set's bar 17, beat 1, to land on that blackout. So essentially you, you could just do the same thing. You're just going to stack in that final chord. Raise your hand if you're having trouble. Anybody having trouble? Doing good so far? It's actually way easy this way.
Yeah. What the story and times after BB eleven one thirteen one? Uh, okay, eleven one, uh, eleven one, thirteen one. The next one I did was thir- uh Oh, after thirteen one, the final one at the end was. It actually start on sixteen three to land on seventeen one. So like sixteen three will give you two beats, and then you land on seventeen one. Does that make sense? So that final tag, oh, it's not even up here. So that final landing for that final chord to land on there, you start on beat uh, bar sixteen three, bar sixteen beat three to land on bar seventeen beat one. So you just loop that section, and you got to be out by the blackout. Okay, how many people are kind of caught up pretty much there? Last thing I want is to just kind of simplify this uh, is at bar 18, beat 2, which is where that blackout takes place. I want you to just do a simple switch over to the taiko drums, do a full two-hand mittens action, and just literally go boom, right on. So it's, it's on bar 18, beat 1. If you back up to start on bar 17, beat 4, it's gonna bar. You're just gonna count one, two, bar eighteen, beat two, bar eighteen, beat two. So you go one, two, three. You know, so nice little hit. Uh, let me turn mine up. And then it's got that last slow swell to the end. So. You could just throw that in again. That's uh, bar 18B2 that it needs to land. How are we doing so far? I know it was a lot to process. Obviously, we didn't get to stacking the arrangements today because there was still more to do. The next step in arranging this would be really just to break out into more parts uh, and stacking what's going on there. But I mean, you already kind of have a, uh, a bit of fullness with the brass. It would really be with the strings because in initially at the beginning of the the BPM equals 114, we only have viola and cello. We could do a lot more expounding upon that by putting, you know, duplicating some of what's going on already into those other parts. What I want to do lastly for this, in order to make these swells work, last stage of the swell action is let's go ahead and very easily create a stereo aux input. All right, so just make a single stereo aux input, command shift N, single stereo aux input. And we're going to take that aux, and we're going to call it horns. And we're basically going to route the input of that aux so that it is uh, bus one two. Oh, sorry, I lost my bus bus routing here for some reason. Uh, there we go. So make the input of the aux bus one two, and then we're gonna send 
all of the outputs for the brass to that uh, to that bus one two by selecting them all and hold shift plus option and on the output which is down here shift plus option on the output select bus one two so they're all routed there okay so we're gonna make a command shift in make a new stereo bus you can just call it horns or brass I mean I guess brass may be better suited brass because we already have a horn so brass um, and we're gonna make the input bus one two and then we're gonna select all of them you know click the first hold shift click the last and then hold shift option and send them out to bus one two yes uh, right here on the input here you can just go to bus is it grayed out yeah if it's great if your bus happens to be grayed out you just need to go to your setup procedures that you normally do go to setup IO go to the bus tab and you're just gonna go where it says default make sure it says all buses and just hit default and OK and it should add them in they basically just weren't added in there and then you should be able to go and now see the bus tab open it work yeah okay and then so that's bus input for them and then you're gonna do the bus output for this group after we do that bus output we're gonna just simply do some very easy automation volume automation so all we're gonna do is for the brass bus switch it to right and we're gonna start from the beginning of that section there all we have to do is write swells for the brass and you can do it in real time if we just switch over to the mix window we're gonna turn them down just a bit and literally all we have to do is, is push play and automate them so that they swell. You know, so basically, all you're all you're gonna do is is automate those volume swells, uh, and you could you could write them in if you wanted to. You could very easily just um, if you didn't want to manually do them or switch to write, you could just leave it in read. Grab your pencil tool, free flow, a little bit of you know, blah up and then back down and then back up again and then back down and then a final back up pump. Too well. After that's done, final step for this project, it, you could really just do it from where you are unless you can spend more time on it. Final step for this project, go ahead and select the video, go to File, Bounce To, QuickTime, send it on out. You could put your the file name, you know, Star Trek Into Darkness trailer. You might want to put your name on it. And, oops, and go ahead and throw it to your bounce folder let it bounce at 48. It's going to do it in real time. things real quick just uh, just two two major things one here is your final exam review 
Uh, this is the list we're going to be using for Monday. This is the stuff to give you a heads up on what's on it. The second thing is, if you did not already submit IceH to the MTL server, I need it submitted there so I can put grades in and kind of figure out where you are. This project also needs to be bounced out to QuickTime, and the QuickTime also needs to end up on the MTL server. You can either do it today or you can do it Monday, um, just because I know we ran a little late. Um, one other thing in addition to that, make sure everybody's signed in, and then you guys are good to go, and I will see you Monday, we'll have a healthy review. Oh, sorry, one other thing, one other thing, you might want to write on your sheet. So I'm building a web page for review so that you guys actually have video from this class. It's going to take me a little while to get it all uploaded. I think I only have, honestly, the first two weeks up there so far, but because I have all that video compiled, I just need to get it all posted. It is at vincecasas.com slash mus239. So vincecasas.com slash mus239. If you go to just vincecasas.com, there's no links for it there because that's my normal web page, but I just threw it in as a separate page. So again, it's uh, V-I-N-C-E, last name is spelled C-A-S-A-S -S dot com slash M-U-S 239. Uh, when you go online, you'll see, you'll, only, you'll see a whole bunch of weeks up there that are duplicates. So I just have the shell for everything else that's beyond week two, but I'm getting them up there today. Hopefully I'll have, be at least halfway by today and all the way by the end of the week. So you guys can have video to watch of any of the weeks that you missed or any of the things that are on this list that you're like, I don't know how to do that. We're going to do a full healthy review on Monday. I will see you Monday. Good job today, guys. Hopefully that was fun. Um, I know it was a little bit of a you know, a roller coaster, just jumping into it and going for it. That loop option is incredibly useful. You know, Obviously, that loop option just makes life easy, just stacking crap together and piecing it. But um, very good. Very good job. Any questions, thoughts, ideas? Yes, Dylan. Uh, I got that same message. Oh, let's see. It may have just been. We'll see what it says. Oh, mine made it. Oh. Mine made it audio only with no quick time. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, it did. Uh, if yours made it as audio, I'll take it. I'll just take it as audio. If it's easier that way. Yeah, I don't know why, why it... Uh,